Hello guys, what's up? Uh, how is all doing? Hope you all doing well. Uh, I'm doing quite well as well. So today, actually, I'm going to talk about a few of my favorite uh, directors of all time. Uh, I got my laptop on so that I can talk more, you know, with more information. I guess. So yeah, let's talk about a few of my most favorite directors ever. So the first one I'm actually going to talk about is Akira Kurosawa, definitely. He's definitely you all know that he is one of the best directors ever so akira kurosawa was born in 1910 and he died in 1999 so before definitely dying he made quite a few films seven samurai rashomon ikuru yezimbo these are you know one of his best few of his best films i am low definitely so I haven't actually watched lots of films of him, but definitely few of Seven Samurai is one of my most favorite films. Rashomon is a legendary film and High and Low is a masterpiece as well. So these are definitely my favorite few of my favorite films. And this man literally changed in the you know way people make films. He literally revolutionized the cinema. That's it. That's why he is a legend. People are studying about him these days. And the next one I'm actually going to talk about is Ingmar Bergman. So I know a lot of people pronounce his name differently. It's actually in Swedish it's probably called Barman or Badiman, something like that. But I will just say Ingmar Bergman, that's all. And he's a Swedish film director. He was born in 1918 and he died in 2007. So during his lifetime, he made quite a few films. The Seventh Seal was released in 1957. That's literally, if I make a top five film I've ever watched, I would put The Seventh Seal uh, in my top five list definitely. Because this film is beyond everything, beyond everything I've ever imagined. The Seventh Seal was that level. So the Seven Seal was released in 1957. Persona was released in 1966. Persona is quite a good film as well. While the strawberries, I haven't watched it. And there are the Silence, Autumn Sonata, To the Dark City. There was a called the Virgin Spring. It was released in 1960. The Virgin Spring is also a great film. I watched this film as well. So in my Bergman is definitely the, one of the best directors ever. Uh, actually. Uh, I know that Ingmar Bergman or probably Akira Kurosawa sent a letter to each other saying that uh, the late spring was a kind of adaptation of Akira Kurosawa's uh, Rashomon. So that's it. That's quite funny to be honest. And there is Shatoji Tai definitely the proud of our, you know, Bengali culture. This man, the man, the myth, the legend, Shatoji Tai. Says the Indian filmmaker was born on 1921 and he died in 1992. Few of his best films are Pathe Pasali, Gopi Gain Bhagavan, one of my most favorite films ever. Aparjito, a legendary film. Uh, and what I heard is that he was the first filmmaker to ever watch, ever use a GoPro camera, which I'm not sure if it's true or not, but that's really incredible uh, how he changed the film. Uh, you know, Indian cinema, uh, what a legend, man. We should be proud to be just you know, Asian that we have a legend like him in our uh, culture or something like that. The next director I'm going to talk about is Sergio Leone. As you guys know, that I'm a big Western fan, uh, Western film fan, so he's an Italian film director. Uh, he was born in 19. 29 to 1989 during his lifetime he made a lots of films so i watched quite a few films of him you know? and these films are the good the bad the ugly the legendary films one of the greatest films ever made it's the third film of the dollar trilogy if you don't know that it's actually from a trilogy called the dollar trilogy uh, featuring clean stood so that is the good the bad the and the ugly the fish, a fish full of dollars uh, first one was released in 
um, I'm not sure which one is actually first. Well, a fistful of dollars is the first one. It was released in 1964, then uh, for a few dollars more, it was released in 1965, and uh, the good, the bad, and the bad. Ugly, it was released in 1966. So, three years in a row, they released three films. Then there comes the legendary film Once Upon a Time in the West. It was released in 1968. This is the you know, as I just said, if I make a top five movie list, this one will definitely be on my list as well. And then in 1984, there is uh, the Once Upon a Time in America, which is quite modern compared to his other films. And this movie, you know, has Robert De Niro and a few other you know, uh, actors in this. And Dr. Sakat, which I suggested a few days ago, was released in 1971. Unforgiven, well, Unfor Unforgiven wasn't actually directed by him, it was directed by Clint Eastwood, we all know that. The next filmmaker I'm going to talk about is, uh, you know, Christopher Nolan, definitely. Our director is, got a lot of fan of his, but some people are like, eh, uh, why are you talking about Christopher Nolan? You're talking about the great director, so why are you talking about Christopher Nolan? Well, Christopher Nolan is a great director. That's he's definitely one of the best of all time. So Christopher Nolan was you know, born in 1970, and he is still alive. That's what matters. So yeah, well, what should I say? Actually, I watched all of his films. That's it. So The Dark Knight, Tenet, Inception, Castle, Dark Knight Rises, Batman Begins, Stan Kirk, Memento, Memento. Oppenheimer coming in 2023, The Prestige, Insomnia, Man of Steel, Man of Steel was directed by him, following, uh, and then, which one? There are no films left, I guess. So I've watched all of these films, that's what the matter is. And I think my favorite film is Interstellar, because uh, I still remember the first time I watched the film. Uh, I didn't actually understand anything. I I was focused so much focused on what to understand what the black hole is going on, what the one who is doing. So I couldn't even realize what the message is throughout the film. But then when I watched it for the second time, I was like, fuck the theories, fuck everything. Let's just enjoy the film. And that's when I realized what a beautiful film it was. The background music, the emotions going through all the film, that just, just blew my mind. Man. It's really my most favorite film ever. Interstellar, definitely. But I think uh, Nolan's best film is The Pistis, which was released in 2006. That's definitely his best film. And I have high expectations for Oppenheimer, which was released in 2023, uh, which has Killian Murphy, who is definitely, you know, one of the most fan favorite actor right now. Uh, the Robert Downey Jr., Emily Blunt, Florence Pugh. I don't know how you pronounce this Rami Malek is definitely one of the best actors of this generation. Jack Quaid and it also which uh, has you know Matt Damon. So we all know Binheimer who is uh, he was actually the inventor of uh, those atomic bombs. So I hope it will be a good film. So let's talk about David Lynch as well who is not actually making films these days but David Lynch is a fucking legend. David Lynch uh, was born in 1946. A few of his films are Mulholland Drive, which is one of my most favorite films. You should definitely watch Mulholland Drive if you haven't watched it. It was released in 2001. And then he actually made the first Dune. It was a series. Then Blue Velvet. I haven't watched Blue Velvet yet. I actually have to watch this one. No. There are a few films that I know I have to watch. I need to watch, but I haven't watched it. And there is Lost Highway. Lost Highways is an incredible film as well. And there is The Elephant Man, uh, Inland Empire, Wild at Heart. Uh, these movies, you should definitely watch these films. Um, but Mulholland Drive is a legendary film, legendary masterpiece. Then, who is Jet Ruth? I should talk about David Fincher. So, I know he directed Seven and Fight Club. David Fincher. So, he was born in 1960. 
Lake Fight Club, all of the best films ever. Seven God Girl Zodiac Man and the Girl with Dragon Tattoo. I didn't know that he directed the Girl with Dragon Tattoo. I watched this film actually so long ago. Uh, I don't know how old I was, but I watched the Dragon and the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo uh, quite a long time ago. So he directed the social network as well. He directed quite famous film uh, movies. So that's it. That's all about. David Fincher, I think Fight Club is his best film. Um, who else is there? Alfred Hitchcock. Yep, Alfred Hitchcock. Fuck. Hitchcock. So Alfred Hitchcock was born in 19, 1899. This man directed Psycho. Everyone has seen Psycho. Vertigo, everyone has seen Vertigo. Rear Window. Probably a lot of people have watched Batigo. I mean, Rear Window. And North by Northwest. And the Man Who Knew Too Much. I haven't watched this one. Not Odious. I haven't watched this one. The Strangers on a Train. You should watch this one. This film is kind of funny. No, it's mysterious, but it's kind of funny. To catch a thief, I probably haven't watched this film as well. I should watch actually more movies of. Alfred Hitchcock. I watched only three or four, something like that. But if you know that well, Alfred Hitchcock is a legend, that's all that matters. And uh, whom more should I talk about? Uh, who should I talk about? Um, how many directors are actually there? I haven't talked about Quentin Tarantino. Uh, I don't actually, I'm not actually a big fan of Tarantino, but yeah, he is a great uh, filmmaker, that's for sure. And um, who else is there? Uh, let's see. Who else? Oh, fuck. Uh, I haven't even talked about Martin Scorsese. Uh, I'm sorry for that. I don't have list for this in this time. So, uh, it's kind of hard to remember when you are recording a video. So, yeah, Martin Scorsese is the fucking legend. Everyone knows who he is. He directed Goodfellas, Taxi Driver, The Irishman, The Wolf of Wall Street, Shutter Island. And a lot of people think Shutter Island was directed by Christopher Nolan. I don't know why. Uh, but Shutter Island was actually directed by Martin Scorsese. He directed Casino, Killers of Flower Moon, Killers of the Flower Moon, which was supposed to re- be released in this year. Uh, but I'm not sure when it's going to be released. He actually directed Silence, which is quite incredible because Silence is an underrated film. Uh, the Departed, which he got an Oscar for, which was actually adapted from a Japanese film, if I'm not wrong. So that is there is Martin Scorsese. I have talked about one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, eight directors already. I will probably talk about more directors in the future, but that's it for today. I video is already 30 minutes long, so that's it. Uh, see you next time, I guess. That's it.